Crosby, who sits, as you see, heavily on his right buttock. From in front, you can see even better that he takes more weight on his right, uh, on the right side of his body. Here is the curvature of his spine, and here are the flank creases. Examine also babies lying tummy on their tummy, face down. And here is a different baby with again a small curve, flank creases here, and prominence of this part of his um, head with the prominent ear. These are subtle features associated with scoliosis. We noticed almost from birth that Charles didn't lay straight in his Moses basket, didn't lay straight in his cot, and when he sat up he slumped slightly to one side. We visited the GP who invariably told us there was little or nothing to worry about and this was common in young babies. Babies with a scoliosis convex to one side always rotate the head away from the convexity of the curve. So she is looking to the, to the right. And if you try to make her turn her head to the left, she will protest loudly. Here is the corrective plaster technique. The child is anaesthetized to avoid frightening. The spine is first gently manipulated to correct the curve on a cotrell frame. Then this corrected position is held by a plaster jacket. The use of plaster jackets for infantile scoliosis is central to my work as the plaster jackets hold the bent spine in the corrected positions till it is straight. Here is eight month old Catherine. Note how the plaster jacket has been trimmed to allow normal breathing. The hole at the back is to get the flattened ribs on the concave side of the curve to grow out and the prominent ribs on the convex side to grow flat and so remodel the child's body shape. A baby grows fast. If the baby has a bent spine, that bent spine will also grow more bent at the same rate as the baby is growing. So in order to change the direction of growth of this baby's spine, you correct it very gently, hold it in a corrected position constantly, which therefore requires a plaster jacket, and allow the spine to grow in that position for the next two months. The first jacket went on, and then every three months under anaesthetic they were changed here. And he had about three or four, um, and then there was, like he says, during that time he learned to walk um, with his plaster really jacket on. The baby soon grows out of that plaster jacket. The next time you correct it a little further, again a plaster jacket, until the spine has grown completely straight. Then I hold them for a little while in about six months in a removable brace now, freedom. And then after we finished with the plaster jackets, we got one that we could take off, that he had to wear most of the time at night or during long periods of sitting. So if we were on a long car journey or if he was watching a video or something like that, he'd put the jacket on then. And when the x-rays and the clinical examination confirm that the spine is now stable in its newly grown straight position, the child is returned to a normal life. I watch them once a year. I would say his back now is pretty, pretty good. I have to refer to Miss Meta here. I, we feel it's Direct. pretty good, pretty straight. His back really was quite hunched. His shoulder blade protruded as well. Um, so he sort of, sort of sat a bit wobbly. He's also got a very weak muscle tone. He sticks his tummy forward, his bottom sticks out. He's got a large lordosis, and it's that lordosis that is fighting the full correction of the scoliosis, which now is negligible. Okay. I'm going to show you another very clever exercise. All right? You come and lie down here. The pussycat hug is an exercise I use to reduce the lordosis, the hollowing of the lower part of the back. Good. Now 
I this do. is a very clever exercise that only clever boys can do. Bend your knees. Bend, 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 bend. All the way up. All the way up. That's right. And now hug your knees with your hands. That's right. And now you're doing a pussycat hug. That's what it's called. You become a pussycat. We try wherever possible to make sure that Charles looks to his left, so if we sit him, if we put him next to a wall, if the wall's on his right-hand side, there's nothing to look at. So we will, he's constantly encouraged to look towards his left. Charles, Charlie, Charles, look. Now this, he was absolutely unable to look this far to his left at birth. Charlie. Here is a baby who was noted by his mother always to sit in a curve, C curve. And baby buggies and baby chairs tend, especially with the harness on, to perpetuate the deformity so that this baby is growing in the wrong position. Now babies also, when they have a curve, tend to tip their pelvis up to the opposite side, to the right side here. And to correct that, and also it's all part of physiotherapy without the baby re realising that he's being put through his paces. This is the way to carry children, against the, child, the father's chest, stretching him so that the curve is being stretched and all the time his spine and his head are improving as he's growing. Here is a baby still in his fetal position, which is being maintained by the way his caring, loving mum is carrying him, supporting his buttock and perpetuating the overall rounded fetal position. Now, holding him, carrying him, encouraging him to turn his head to the correct side is one part of the treatment. The other is to try passively to push this curve towards the middle. So um, Mrs. Bar Mr. Taylor here will be showing how this is done by pulling this tilted pelvis straightening it and pushing him here and now he comes into a nice straight line his spine doesn't bulge as badly as it used to in the past gentle massage it's a tradition in, the, in india where i come from to give a daily massage to all babies it's normal and it does help because it does stretch out little kinks <laughs> when you bring this down like that you're really stretching out, the whole base of the spine is stretched out, so it's a pull all the way down the spine. And then when you can finish, you can just do that. And if you try doing that, it's the most wonderful feeling. Your whole spine is stretched out, and it's so simple. And you can feel it releasing tension at the base of the spine. So that if you see what's happening, when you stretch the arms out, it's opening the chest. These are the curves then left untreated, some of them are very benign and they increase slowly until at adolescence, with the adolescent growth spurt, as in this photograph here, you will see that there has a convenient worsening of the deformity. This shoulder blade is now sunken, this part is really hollow here, and this rib prominence is larger. Here is an intermediate progressive curve in that it is seen here at the age of four as a small curve. By six it is a much larger curve and at adolescence it becomes a huge deformity uh, with, with the potential for further increase so that spinal fusion here, correction by major surgery is required. And you can see that she has a good cosmetic appearance and she looks really good standing upright. On bending forward, you can see that there is quite a considerable prominence of the rib cage. Here is a very innocuous, gentle curve in a nine-month-old baby boy. Note what happened to him by the age of two and a half. It became a significant deformity bending to the left in the upper part and to the right in the lower part. By the age of six it had become a horrific deformity with a huge, which a huge uh, 